Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Wonderful. <clears throat> Teach me faith and duty. of life, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. On the third, sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. Jesus, so only say, Sanctify forever, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Amen. Good singing, guys. Good singing. And let us turn to 510, Heaven Came Down. Hymn 510, Heaven Came Down. remain standing. Tonight, we pray and trust that you're doing well and have had a relaxing afternoon, and uh, it is a blessing to be here. And tonight, my word for tonight is quick. I want to move things along because we've got a busy week, and so I do want to try to have a quicker sermon than usual, and I'd like to take some time to pray at the conclusion of the sermon. We won't have our invitation like normal, but I would like to have a prayer time just to be praying for our vacation Bible schools. We're asking some of our men to, to pray and to help us that way. And uh, we are in the home stretch, and we have a few things to do after the service as well. I think we got some flags we need to set up outside, so we might need to uh, have some help with that. And, uh, and just, I got to get some, a few things out of the attic that stay up there all year, and they only come down during BBS time. So if anyone wants to lend a hand with that, the attic should only be about 130 degrees right now, so it shouldn't be too bad. Not 150 like it will be later in the week, but anyhow, uh, we're glad to be together tonight. Let's pray, and uh, let's ask the Lord's help tonight as we pray together. Lord, thank you for 
this service and the opportunity to be here in this place. Lord, we pray that you would speak to our hearts. I pray that we would see truth from your word. And uh, thank you for these who have made this a priority to come out on this Sunday night. Uh, we want to take some time to think about our week ahead, and Vacation Bible School, to pray together. And uh, Lord, to hear something from your word briefly that will help us right where we are tonight. There's a number of things going on, and there's a lot of people going through, Lord, just different difficulties or challenges. And in the midst of it all, we know that you're good and you're faithful. So we look to you. We ask you for your faithful help tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward, please. And as they do, uh, tonight, like I said, right after the service, we'll try to tie up any loose ends. Any last things we can do to try to kind of get ready for tomorrow would be great. It all starts tomorrow, 6 o'clock. But if you are worker, you're working or helping, if you can be here around 5.30 or so, uh, that would really be a blessing. If you could come around that time, we would certainly appreciate it. And, uh, and then, you know, 5.30, 5.40 each night would really be a big help to have everybody here. It's going to be a warm week. Thankfully, our AC is working. And uh, <laughs> it even is telling us what the humidity is. Uh, for whatever reason, that popped up back there, so, uh, and the humidity is at a, at a good place, I think, but we're glad to be uh, able to serve the Lord and have a building to do so that's air-conditioned, and uh, we're looking forward to all that God will do. Uh, let's pray for the evening offering. Uh, Brother John Woodward, would you pray for the offering, please? Thank you very much for that, Bethany. That was lovely. So everyone, now let's stand and we will continue to worship. Turn to him 501, Now I Belong to Jesus. And we will sing uh, the first verse and we will pause, we will greet one another, and then we will conclude with the third verse. Jesus, my Lord. Oh. 
please turn and greet one another. Okay, on the third. Joys flood my soul, for Jesus has saved me, freed me from sin that long enslaved me. His precious blood he gave to redeem. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. All right, thank you. You can be seated. Uh, it is good to be together. I'm encouraged every time we have fellowship, whether it's just regular talking before the service and Sunday nights. Um, it's good to have a church that has Sunday night service, and then when we have the fellowship time, whether it's Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night, it's always an encouragement to me, okay? And, uh, you know, whenever a church is trying to do something, Satan tries to attack and tries to keep, you know, uh, unity from taking place and tries to discourage people. And I, I just feel like I've been in a spiritual battle this week leading up to today, um, and, and nothing that, you know, would be shocking to anyone but just things that just a, a spiritual battle that you go through and it happens during times like this um but you're an, you're an encouragement to me uh my friends and family here at truth baptist church are a huge boost so i thank you for that um tonight it's good to have patty visiting with us thank you from sanston and uh, so thank you patty for coming 
and it's good to have John uh, Logie with us. I know John has been here with Audrey before, but it was the Sunday that uh, my family and I were on vacation, so it's good to have John here, and he's going to be kind of the head of Bible there at Grace and teaching a lot of Bible at Grace Christian School uh, starting in the fall here just a few short weeks, believe it or not, about a month from now, school will be started there, and that's almost hard to believe, but it's good to have you here and to meet you and to uh, have some visitors even on a Sunday night, and uh, so what a blessing that is. We're in 1 Corinthians uh, tonight, 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. Am I not turned on? Thank you, Brother Purcell. He's an encouragement too, lets me know I'm not on. He does it very inconspicuously, so thank you, thank you. And uh, I just, I need help, and I, I'm thankful for people that come alongside and help, you know. And uh, going into a week of BBS, it's really felt like that. It's felt like we've had everyone kind of rally together. And uh, so thank you for that. And uh, it means a lot to me. Really more than I can ever describe or put into words. Uh, it means a lot to me to have church family that uh, gives themselves like this. And I know here at church I have people that care and love the Lord and love me. So I praise the Lord for that. Uh, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. We're going to begin reading in verse 23. And uh, I, like I said, I'm going to try to keep this short because I want to have a time of prayer. We're continuing through 1 Corinthians this evening. Chapter 10, beginning in verse 23. There the Bible says, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, uh, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscience' sake. For the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you eat, asking no question for conscience' sake. But if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that showed it, and for conscience' sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks? Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Give none offense neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Uh, I love verse 31 here. Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. And so tonight, for just a few moments, we're thinking about this, God's glory in all things. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you again for another time to gather here around your word. We have a lot that we're trying to do as we get prepared for VBS. Help us, Lord. Help us to get everything in order and everything in place. And I do pray that you would clear aside distractions for just a few minutes. I pray that you would bind Satan in any kind of spiritual warfare that could otherwise take place. I do ask that you would, uh, Lord, bring an increase, bring a great number of young people and new families and others that will hear about our Vacation Bible School and bring their children uh, to a wonderful week. And thank you for the effort that's gone into it, and I pray that you would use it ultimately for your glory, and we'll trust you to do that. We thank you and love you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, when we talk about the glory of God, we understand that uh, that is the reason for our existence. We exist for God's glory. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't exist. But we do exist for that purpose, and God is glorified through us uh, as we come to know him and as we live this life. And the life of the believer should always be about that in mind, giving glory to God. Uh, I love verse 31 that tells us, whatever we do, do all to the glory of of God. But I think as we read the text, and this kind of falls in line with what we've already been studying to a certain degree here in 1 Corinthians, I think what we find is, is that there is a way to go about life that can give glory to God, 
if we'll follow some of the instruction that Paul gave to the Corinthian church there. Remember, the Corinthians were believers, new believers that had been saved out of debauchery. A lot of them had lived lifestyles that were completely and totally different than what they were now being called to live. And so there's some very straightforward instruction about how to conduct oneself. And there's a lot of instruction for new believers and new Christians, but there's also instruction for more mature Christians because what happened in Corinth was there were some that were believers longer than others. And in any place where there's a growing church and people are being added to the church, you're going to have some believers that have been around longer than others. And we've touched a bit on Christian liberty and the way that we conduct ourselves in Christian liberty. And that truth is brought to the forefront yet again here in this text. And so we'll see some of that. But I want to just for a few moments think about this. How do we glorify God in all things according to this passage? Well, the first thing is this. I believe we ought to seek the welfare of others. Look with me down again at verses 23 and 24. All things are lawful for, lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Uh, that's an interesting word. Uh, we might say helpful there. All things are lawful for me, but all things uh, edify not. And I'm thankful for what we have here in the English, but when it says not everything is expedient and not everything necessarily edifies, we could say not everything is necessarily helpful that we do and not everything builds everybody up. Okay, so, and, and it might be something that we're allowed to do, but it still might not be helpful and it might not build other believers in their relationship with Jesus. So, with that in mind, verse 24 says, Then let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth, and we think there of welfare. We're not talking about robbing a guy's bank account, all right, but it might appear that way when we first read it let no man seek his own but every man another's wealth his well-being his welfare so with that thought that's the first point i'm making seek the welfare of others you see we're responsible in the christian life not just for ourselves but for our brothers and sisters in christ in other words i'm not just responsible for me i'm responsible for you and you might say, well, sure, you're, you're the under-shepherd, you're the pastor, so of course you're responsible to us. And yes, I will answer to God one day for how I pastored Truth Baptist Church. Uh, but you understand, that extends beyond me. You are responsible to every member of this church if you're a part of the body of Christ as well. We are responsible and we are accountable to each other. Now, I love churches that are going and growing, and that's what we should be. And I, I believe that's what we've always tried to seek to do and to be, is to be a going, growing church. We've always had a lot going on, and we're always seeking to grow, uh, but not at the expense of truth. Um, we're not going to forsake truth in order to just add as many numbers as possible. But do you know that in, in our modern-day American church culture, it's easy for people just to kind of slip into a service on a Sunday, slip out on a Sunday, and really feel no attachment whatsoever. And really to feel no accountability whatsoever. And by the way, I'd rather have someone do that than not do that. Amen? I'd rather have someone slip in and slip out of church than not go to church at all. I'm, I'm thankful for people that are just going to church. But sometimes that's about all it is. And people are content to slip in and slip out. Now, you might see and understand that at a church like ours, it's not a, what they would call a mega church. It's not as easy to do that. It's not as easy to slip in and slip out unnoticed, although people still do that, and, and that's fine. Um, but if we're really wanting to grow in the Christian life, we'll understand something. We're accountable to each other. I, I, I answer to you. Uh, I've had some people ask me, who are you accountable to uh, here at the church? And my answer is, first of all, I'm accountable to God, as we all are. But I'm also accountable to the church. And I'm accountable to this church. I answer to the people that make up Truth Baptist. 
And so I have to conduct myself in that way. And everyone needs to. We're not alone in this thing. Sometimes people like to define church, ecclesia, as called out ones. And that's a definition that's been used. But it's really an inappropriate definition. It's, a, it's really a called out assembly. Church, ecclesia, called out assembly. We're not ones. We're not individuals in this. We are an assembly together. And it's a part of the body of Christ. We all have a function, but we're all dependent upon one another, aren't we? And therefore, we're accountable to one another. And we should understand that uh, we have a responsibility to others as well as ourselves. And that's really, I think, the hallmark of these verses here. And it really speaks to that thing. If we want to glorify God, we've got to be mindful of others. Uh, I can't just go and do what I want when I want, how I want, with no accountability in the local church. And that's important. When we are a part of a local church, we understand that if we really mess up and blow it and make a bad decision and we do something that's of a public nature that's known or maybe even non-public, but it needs to be made known, whatever it is, uh, in in a very egregious way, there might be a time where there needs to be a reconciliation with the church family. That's what church discipline is all about. Now, I'm not one who's trying to look to discipline people. (laughs) I'm not trying to kick anyone out of the church, just so you know. But we are accountable to one another as as a body. And there have been times where we've had to have some folks, you know, be honest about a mistake they made in front of the church family. It's not often. It hasn't been even close to being often. But on a few occasions, that's had to happen. Why? Because we understand that we don't just live how we want and get away with it here. You can't live in a family in the home that you live in and just do whatever you want and get away with it. Right? Spouses can't just do whatever they want and get away with it. Some of you say, oh yeah, I can. But you know what I'm saying. Children can't just do whatever they want in the home and get away from it. Or get away with it if they're being disciplined correctly, if they're being raised right. We have to be definitive about some things. The same is true in the local church. We are responsible for others and to others. And so then he goes on and he speaks about, again, eating certain types of meat. Verse 25, he says, Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that being the marketplace, that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. He said, if something's sold... In a public market, you go right ahead and eat it. Amen. I like that right there. Okay, I like meat and I like steak and amen. That's a man right there. I like that. I just can't afford it all that much, but uh, these days especially. Go to Kroger and buy four steaks and see how much it costs you. And uh, we've had steaks, on. we've had some uh, company a couple times and grilled up steaks, and I'll tell you, it about put me in the poorhouse. I had to take out a loan to you know, order some steaks. But we're allowed to do that according to the word of God. Notice verse 26. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast. Now, that's interesting within and of itself. If any that believe not bid you to a feast. And ye be disposed to go. That is, you desire to go. Can I just stop right there for a second and say something? This scripture is being presented in a way as though God's people should at times be invited to feasts of non-Christians. And we should feel disposed to go. Amen Amen tonight to that. You see, I I just, I've got to tell you something, and I think, and I want to try to help us tonight. There are some believers who have become so separated Uh, they are ineffective. And and there's no building relationships with people who are outside uh, of the family of God. And yes, we love the family of God. We're a part of the family of God, but we should have some kind of relationships outside of here also. And our relationships should be something that we're working on and building on and trying to work towards. It's not just something that's impersonal. Okay, hi, bye, I'm a Christian, here's a track, whatever. We should be trying to, trying to cultivate relationships as much as we possibly can. 
keeping in mind that we also have a responsibility to not be influenced by the world. Okay? So there's a balance to that. I've seen many a Christian say, well, I'm going to be out there so I can really win them. And they go to the bar, and before long, uh, you can't determine them from the rest of the lost people there. Okay? So I'm not speaking about going and being just like them. I am saying we should have the kind of temperament and we should be the kind of person that is invited by lost people to go have a meal. Well, that's, I think that's something that should be convicting for every one of us. It's convicting for me. As I read that, I thought to myself, that's interesting. I don't think I have enough lost people inviting me to meals. Maybe I should have more. And you know, you would have a, high grade, a much greater chance of leading that person to the Lord at their table than you would just in passing. And I'm telling you that's true. So there's an evangelistic aspect of this. So that's just extra tonight. I know the message is supposed to be short, but I thought that was really good. Uh, but notice, whatsoever is set before you, eat, asking no question, question for conscience sake. Uh, so if you go and you have a meal with a lost person, you know what you need to do? Eat whatever they give you. Okay? In foreign countries, and those of you, who, Brother Woodward can speak to this, if you're a missionary, you, you, don't, you don't say no to whatever they serve you. I'm sure you've had some interesting things served to you. Yeah, I don't know. You can see Brother Woodward for all the interesting things he's had served to him in foreign countries. But uh, it's right etiquette if someone serves you something to not say, no, I don't think so. Chris and Bethany, you've been there as well, right? You don't say, no. Now, it was funny. The pastor I worked for in Ohio, he just, um, he went on a missions trip, and he could not stomach some of the stuff that was being served. So he went 10 days and ate nothing, absolutely nothing. And uh, he said he wasn't feeling good, and after a while he wasn't feeling good because he wasn't eating anything. He just ate nothing for 10 days. And, uh, okay, that might be one approach. But the biblical approach is something is given, then you eat it. Now notice, but if any man say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that showed it, and for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So <coughs> he's saying here in a situation where you're eating maybe with some lost folks and you're having dinner at their table, but maybe there's another believer with you and someone that is very impressionable and they're uh, very concerned about what might be offered to idols. If they see and know that this meat that's being served has been previously offered to idols and they say that to you, uh, you know what you should do? Not for your own conscience sake, but for their conscience sake, refrain. Okay, so not for your own, but for the conscience of others. That's important also. Uh, so, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Now, we would have to be careful about that situation if we were with both believers and unbelievers and make a determination as the Lord leads. But if someone is truly bothered in their conscience by something, let's defer to our brothers and sisters in Christ who might have a conviction about something that we might not have. That's how the family of God, you know, gets along. That's how the family of God goes to, uh, forward. And there's differences in dress standards and there's some differences and uh, some other types of standards with in regards to recreation in regards to what someone might do or go where they might be as opposed to someone else and it's not necessarily wrong but someone else might be affected by it so you know what I'm going to do I'm going to be careful in talking about the things that I might do where someone else could be hurt and offended by that and you know we, we have a responsibility there we have a responsibility there I'm not going to get into specifics here because it could really mess up the message I'm trying to give. But I think from everything from social media especially to talking about what we do, let's just be guarded and careful. If you are not pricked in your conscience about doing something and you are okay before God and his word about a certain issue, great. Just don't do it in front of other believers. And don't talk about it in front of other believers. And don't post it all over the place and put it in people's face and say, yeah, you might have a problem of this, but I don't, you know. And not that people would say that, but it's almost with that kind of a spirit. Let's have a more precious spirit. Let's have a spirit that regards other people. 
And you know what might end up happening? The person that is pricked in their conscience about something might go further on in their Christian walk, and they might have a little bit of a change in how they feel about that issue. Can I tell you something? I am not the same guy I was a decade ago or two decades ago. I mean, I was mighty feisty, and I was mighty um, just kind of, uh, you know, narrow-minded in some things that I don't feel the same way about anymore. So what happened? Did God change? No, God didn't change, but I did change. And I think there were some things that I was, was set in before that I will just be honest, I've shifted in now in my approach about it and thought, thinking about it. It's not that I was wrong necessarily before, but the Lord has done some things in my heart about certain issues where I don't feel the same as I did previously. I think we need to be okay with that. And this is part of the narrow-mindedness, I think, of Christians and, uh, you know, Baptists. May God help us. We, uh, we get something, and man, it is black or white. It's here or it's there, and it's like that for eternity. And man, if you do anything different, then, uh, then I'm telling you, you're just a wrong, sinful compromiser. Now, when it comes to doctrines that we know are true and right, then stay there. I'm not going to give in on the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to give in on the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Okay? I'm not going to give in on the Holy Trinity, Jesus, uh, God existing in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, you know, these accepted doctrines that we know to be sound doctrine of the faith passed down through the ages, I'm not moving on those things. They're non-negotiable. But have room in your heart if you haven't budged for those who have. Okay? And it might be someone within your own family. It might be a child. It might be a spouse. You, you might ha have a world of difference between you and your spouse. Hey, listen, give grace. Give grace. Because the issues where you're different might very well not be the sound doctrine passed down through the ages. They're tertiary issues where we can have differences. Now, there's a lot of pastors I graduated from school with that are right there with me. They're not the same that they were when they graduated from, from college, from Bible college, if they're even a pastor anymore. But those who are, I see, I see there's been some shifts. And they haven't shifted in their doctrine. They haven't shifted in their beliefs. But God has done some things in their heart where they have shifted in some other areas. And you know what? That's between them and God. And what I do is between me and God. Okay, and I'm going to be careful about the conscience of other people. But ultimately, I need to go the way that God's directing me. And we all need to go the way that God is directing us. With that in mind, here's the second thought. Avoid offense if possible. Now, sometimes it's not possible. But if possible, avoid offense. He says in verse 32, Give none offense, neither to the Jews nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. So that tells me, if we're to give none offense, that, that's something I'm sensitive about. I don't want to offend my brother. I don't want to offend my sister. I want to be careful. I want to tread carefully uh, in the way God's leading. I'm thankful that as a church, you know, God has led us in the way that we have. Uh, things might continue to make some shifts and changes here at Truth Baptist as we move forward, but don't get scared when I say that. Uh, I don't believe I'll be giving in on any doctrine if the Lord leads us to maybe take a few changes in some certain areas. I've already changed in some areas, and I think the Lord's still doing a work in my heart, and God's still doing a work in this church. And to a certain extent, we contextualize, but at the same time, we're wise about what we're doing. We don't want to look exactly like the world, but we do want to be relevant in the world in which we live. So God help us to know what that balance is. And then we see third and finally... 
and I'll end with this. With this in mind, then do all to God's glory. If we can say, I am conducting myself to the glory of God in what I'm doing, then that's good. I want to do what I'm doing to the glory of God, not to the glory of myself, okay? If there are some areas where I may be not the same I was before, may it be because I'm doing it for the glory of God ultimately, not because I'm trying to say, look at me, or trying to prove a point, or trying to say, hey, I'm different now. I, I've, I've become enlightened. I'm somehow better than I was before, and you need to be, get there too. No, it not, has nothing to do with any of that. Whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. So I want to conduct myself achieving the goal for why I'm here, to give God glory in all things. And if I think I'm not giving God glory, I'm going to wait or I'm going to stop and I'm not going to go any further. If I think the glory of God's going to be affected or the conscience of a brother or sister is going to truly be hurt, I'm going to pause Be very careful and mindful about things. But if I can move forward with the glory of God, and if I have tried to avoid offense as much as possible and do things in a right way before God and others, then to God be the glory. You know what ultimately gives God, I think, the greatest glory? It's the salvation of men. Notice what he says. Even as I please all men in all things... There he goes again. Now, look, that's, that's something right there. That phrase right there, a lot of pastors would look and say, you're a compromiser. You're a compromiser. There's some pastors that are real narrow-minded. I see them on social media. There's about three of them left, by the way. But, man, they're out looking for a fight, and anyone that says anything about trying to contextualize to the, uh, you know, to, to the culture around them in order to try to reach some, all things to all men. That's what Paul said. He said, even as I please all men in all things... Not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. I'm not going to become such an archaic, (laughs) and excuse the pun, dinosaur, although that's what we are going to be this week. I don't want to be such a dinosaur that I'm unrelatable. I don't want to be a fossil that people look at and say, that's a strange relic from the past. Interesting, let's look at it and move on. Because that's all we'll be. But guess what? I'm not staying there. Because God's called us to a lot more. He's called us to a lot more. And if God's not returned yet, then we don't have to be stuck in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. We're in the 2020s. And we should conduct ministry in the 2020s in an effective way without compromising. Why? Because God hasn't come back yet. If everything was supposed to be the be-all and end-all in the 1950s, God would have come in 1959, and that would have been the end of it. But he didn't, did he? So what do we do? We say, Lord, I want to move forward, but I want to cautiously and carefully do things according to your glory. I want to be mindful of my brothers and sisters. I don't want to be in their face about things. But I do want to stand where you've told me to stand in a in a way that's right, in a way that's becoming of you. And if, if that means there's some adjustments that are made, some minor changes, some shifts that we have to go through in order to become the person you want me to become so that, again, I can be pleasing to all men. Then like the Apostle Paul under the inspiration of God said, I'm going to do the same thing. But not to my profit. If any of this is done so that we can say, look at us, we failed, but to his profit, to God's glory. Amen? Look, uh, we got VBS in front of us, and uh, I, I, VBS, I think, is something that is still being used, and I believe we'll see children here this week that we have never seen in our church before. I think we've worked hard enough that we're going to see some children we've never seen in our church before. And that means we go a little crazy. That means we build a Jurassic Park set. That means we sing songs we don't typically do, you know, and we do things in a fun way that we don't really do any other time of the year. That's all good. Isn't that itself contextualizing to the society in which we live? I believe it is. But I've never heard anyone say, VBS is wicked. It's wrong. You're just trying to reach people. (laughs) No, it's right. We're trying to reach people because we want to see people saved. I don't think we're compromising with blow up dinosaurs up here 
I just don't want to become a dinosaur myself. Amen? Um, let's work towards this week, but you know what? Uh, let's pray right now. we got about 10 minutes, and I'm not going to have a come forward invitation. But what I would like to ask is that uh, some of our men just do a popcorn prayer session. And uh, I, I think I'd like to uh, start with uh, Deacon Doug in the back. I like that. Deacon Doug, DD. Uh, Deacon Chick is, has a headache tonight, so he can't be here. He said he'll be, be, he'll be here tomorrow. But uh, Doug, if you would like to get us started just praying for the week of EBS, and then any other men that would like to just pop in, we'll just take the next 10 minutes or so and just pray uh, about this week, and then I'll close when I feel it's time to do so. Go ahead.
Heavenly Father, we come to you now and we just thank you for uh, this night and this time to gather together again around your word and around service to our community. I know there's some final details to iron out and some things to uh, put in place, but I do pray that you would, Lord, just really give us a great week. It seems like every year we see children and young people come that we never expected. I pray that this year would be no different. And uh, bring them in. Lord, we've done our work. And we've prayed and we've labored. And we want to continue in that right up until uh, we get into this week and throughout the week also. I ask that all that's happening here would be for your glory, your honor. And I pray that we would just have fun, just enjoy the life you've given us, to enjoy life, to enjoy children and VBS and having a good time. And it's, it, it's okay to have fun serving you. It's okay to let your hair down and uh, smile and uh, enjoy the life you've given us as we serve you. So I pray that that's what we would accomplish. And uh, sometimes we get so serious-minded or we just get, we become insular and we forget, Lord, you've called us to enjoy life. And uh, I ask that that's what we would do. And you want to give us life and, and that we'd have it more abundantly. And so help us to experience some abundant fun and exuberant and victorious Christian living uh, this week. And I pray, Lord, that it would bring an influx of young people, families, I pray that you give us more young people for the fall as we look ahead to our children's clubs for King's Kids and those kinds of things. We want to see more reached, and this is a great way to see that accomplished. So we want to give this over to you. We want to continue to bathe this in prayer, and we ask that the Holy Spirit would lead, guide, and direct, and uh, have, have your way in everything that happens. And we'll just uh, we'll follow you as you lead us and as you take control and take the reins. Lord, I do pray for safety. I pray that in the midst of all that we're doing, that no children would be hurt. Or, uh, Lord, it looks like clear weather, so that's good. It does look like hot weather. And uh, I just pray you'd keep it cool in this building, help us to have no issues or problems with, which, with HVAC units and that they would keep operating effectively. And uh, Again, Lord, I, I do pray for safety in the parking lot and with our children in each of our classes. Help us to be mindful of that, and I just pray that you would put total protection around everything that's going on here. And then most importantly, spiritually speaking, I pray that we'd see at least somebody get saved. It would be wonderful to see a child come to know you, or even more than one. But Lord, even if it's just one, we'll rejoice over that, and all of heaven does. And if it's not any, we still rejoice in the gospel being given. But Lord, we pray that you'd give us a result. We pray that you would give us a number uh, even if it's one or if it's ten or if it's a hundred, Lord, I just pray that we'd see someone turn to you. We'll ask you to do that. We can't manufacture that. We can't make that happen. But, Lord, you certainly are in the business of saving souls. So help us to be used as a clean vessel and conduit to seeing people come to know you because ultimately that's how you're glorified. We thank you and love you tonight. Uh, give us a great rest of this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We'll finish up anything we need to. God bless. Have a great night.